Hello there guys, it's eBird Online and I'm here with another review from Before the 90 Days. And this is Season 4, Episode 8, Stranger in a Strange Land. And today I'm going to be talking to you about Lisa Renesman. Before I begin, a very quick message to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to me thus far. If you're yet to click that button, please press it now. And subscribe to my channel and don't forget to follow me on Twitter at mbird99. Right, so I'm going to get straight into this because we've got so much to discuss, as we always do with Lisa and Usman. So today is D-Day for Lisa. It's the day that she's going to meet Usman's mum and family, and she's going to find out if she gets her blessing to marry Usman. And Lisa tells us, if they can't get her mum's blessing, they can't get married. And the reasons are because she's a very conservative Muslim, and I'm a white American. Um, Lisa, you forgot you've got an unpleasant disposition, a despicable personality, and that you're an absolute ball bag. You forgot those things. But who knows, maybe they won't come into play. But before they go to meet Usman's mum, they have to go and buy her a goat. And so they'll buy this goat and present it to Usman's mum as a sweetener of some sort. All I'm going to say about this goat is it's going to have to be some goat. If the goat doesn't crap gold bullion, I think we might have a little bit of a problem. And so they get into a car and we see them go to a market of sorts to go and get this goat. So they get to the goat market and Lisa's shocked and surprised to find that it stinks and it's muddy and dirty. Lisa, it's a goat market. It's like going to a farm. It ain't the cleanest of environment. But as is typical with Lisa, she's like, it stinks, it's smelly. Lisa, you're so OTT. He knows it smells. He can smell it too. Remember the argument you had just yesterday, disrespecting all things Nigerian? Roll it back, wind it in. Just think to yourself, this is disgusting and it stinks. And just don't say it. How hard can it be? Just think it and don't say it. And every time I hear something about you, Lisa, I think it, but sometimes I don't say it. I know when it's too much. Remember, think it and don't say it. So to be fair to Lisa, she did select her goat on its size and on how young it was. And she did look round the goats and pay attention rather than just saying, just take that one, let's go. So props to Lisa for that. But then when Usman asked how much the goat was, the herder looked at him and looked at Lisa and said, mm, 40,000 naira. So Usman said, wow, okay, that's like 115 American dollars. And so Lisa said, mm, I think he's jacked the price up because I'm a white American. And Usman said, no, no, no. But Lisa's utterly convinced. Yes, I'm getting ripped off by this gentleman because I'm white American. I know he's hiked the price. So Usman said, I told you no, I wouldn't let him do that. And I watched this whole exchange and I thought to myself, okay, when the guy said 40,000, he hesitated a bit, which I guess he might do because each goat's going to be worth some Something different but a massive factor was Usman actually said wow uh yeah 40,000 is and then he just translated it why did you say wow wow sounds like that's a lot of money that's what it sounds like to me now as you guys know I've traveled to Nigeria a number of times and it's very much a place where you will haggle with the price for everything whether it's street food or whatever it might be there's always some kind of haggle with the price and very often the price starts out ridiculously high and gets super low. I smelled a rat because there was no semblance of negotiation whatsoever from Usman. Now even if somebody says to you 40,000, I would automatically, whether I knew the price or not, say, okay, 35,000. So I found it extremely strange that he accepted the first offer. But Usman just wants to pay the money and get the hell out of there. So they pay for the goat, but the eBird just couldn't get that goat price off her mind. So I thought I'd do a little bit of research. And Lisa, just so you know, if you were so worried about price, you should have done this too yourself. And after five minutes of searching, what does the eBird find? Current goat prices in Nigeria, 2020. I live an exciting life, I, I can't deny. Here it very clearly says, goat prices in northern states, such as Kaduna, range from 7,000 Naira to 15,000 Naira. So that's about $18 to $38. So she's paid three to five times more than she should have paid for this goat. Usman, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I started feeling sorry for Lisa for a second. She's got a guy that doesn't have any respect for her money. But Lisa sorted that out real quick for me because she said, your mum better like me after coming to this filthy market to buy this stinky goat. And Usman shot her another look and he said, this is my life. This is Nigeria. Oh, Lisa. You just can't leave it alone, can you? And she tells us I've travelled 7,000 miles to be with Usman. Now my fate lies with a goat. And Lisa's named the goat Barney. Usman will have to ensure that Lisa's not mistaken for Barney by his mum later on. And so next time we see this couple, Usman's getting Lisa dressed to go and meet his mum. He says he wants to impress her. And so I can only assume that he's bought a full burqa for her. 
Oh, he hasn't. He's purchased a blue gown. And whilst it looks good, you can still see her face. And then Lisa says, I think I'm going to put some makeup on. And husband tells her, no, don't wear makeup. You're not going out. You're just going to meet my family. And as far as I'm concerned with husband, this was a fatal mistake. At this point, Lisa needs to look as young as possible. And husband tells us his family are upset about him meeting Lisa for the following reasons. That Lisa's white and from the United States. That Lisa wants to take him away and live in America. And that they met online. Wait until the family actually meet her. All of these will turn into positive points when they compare them to Lisa's personality. So they get into the car and they're off to his mum's house. Barney the goat is in the back. And when they arrive, Usman helps the goat get out of the car. He then opens the boot and lets Barney out. And then it transpires he hasn't yet told his mum that he's dating Lisa and that she wants to marry him. Um, what have you told her then? Oh lord. And so they sit outside on the floor, outside his mum's house. And out comes Usman's mum and three of his sisters. Mummy looks at Lisa and she does not look pleased. But even more bizarrely, Lisa looks at mummy and then looks in the opposite direction. And Lisa says very curtly, you have a beautiful home. Uh, Lisa, try and put a bit more into it. It virtually sounds like a death threat. And his sisters tell production that they can't get over the fact that Lisa's so old. They said she looks like she's over 50 and the rest. And they're all now sitting on the floor and Lisa is making no eye contact with any of them and she's making absolutely no effort to be friendly. The whole time, in fact, she's looking at Usman and directing everything to Usman. Usman's mum said, what does she do in the United States? And again, Lisa answers her, a hospice caregiver. Yes, Ebert. Remember, think it and don't say it. But then Usman says, yeah, she's a doctor in the United States. A doctor? And usually, talk of a doctor will help any Nigerian mummy be talked around. But she doesn't even crack a smile. And as they sit in front of Lisa, Lisa said to Usman, are there any questions that they may have about why I'm here? They. They can speak English, you know, Lisa. Maybe mummy can't, but the sisters definitely can. Why say they when they're sitting there? And also, why are you asking, are there any questions that they may have about why I'm here? Surely you should be here because you want to meet the love of your life's mum. You want to meet his sisters and his family. You want to see where he grew up and find out more about him. No, it's none of that. It's because you want to take him away. You want the right to marry him and to whisk him away to America. You're actually not interested in him as a person. Usman is a thing to you, virtually a possession. But then the most telling thing of all happens because Usman said, Mummy, she's here because she's in love with me and she wants to get married. That's her mission and she wants to take me back to America with her. She wants to get married to me. That's her mission. What about you, Usman? Do you want to get married to Lisa? And I know for a fact at this point, if Lisa knew exactly what had been said, she would have been absolutely spitting. And the older sister said, oh, Usman, where did you get this crazy idea from? And mum quite simply shakes her head and says, no. She then gets up and walks back into the house without a word. Usman says he's completely disappointed with the situation. And he said the worst thing that could have possibly happened was that she stood up and walked away. And when production talked to mummy later, mummy says she doesn't want the marriage to go ahead. And she's afraid that Lisa's too old. And she's also worried about him going to America because she's heard that white people don't like black people there. And she's worried about how he might be treated. Usman and Lisa get back into the car. And of course, everything's Usman's fault. Lisa said, you've had two years to practice this. I'm very frustrated. So guys, this pretty much went how I thought it was gonna go. No one's going to be happy that their son wants to marry sour-faced Lisa. But for once, I think they were both at fault in this terrible meeting. I think that first up, Usman should have done all his prep. So he should have said, we're really in love. We may get engaged at some point. I really like this person. He should have also said, she's older. But that doesn't matter to me. Just to prep them. I always think that the absolute shock of seeing something that you didn't expect to see makes the situation far worse. Also, Usman could have tried to sweet talk his sisters before the meeting. And he should have also told Lisa exactly what was going to transpire at the meeting and how to act and how to behave. I mean, Usman by now must know that Lisa's a sour-faced old cow. And so he should have said, come in, smile, be really happy, face them, be cordial, ask them things. And at least try and make it difficult for the mum to say no. Lisa made it so easy. She absolutely made no effort. She gave a half smile at one point. She called his mum and sisters them and they. What do they want to know? What do they think? They're sitting in front of you and I'm pretty certain they speak English. She didn't smile at them at all. Her body language was definitely turned towards Usman and even when she said, you have a beautiful home, she said it with no conviction and no feeling and also Lisa, you haven't seen the home, you're sitting outside. 
And before the meeting, Lisa said, this whole meeting lays in the hands of this goat. Who would imagine that a present that you're giving as a sign of respect would be the major thing that's going to draw somebody's family towards you? Don't you think that you have any responsibility to be nice, to be questioning, to be cordial? And it's typical Lisa because she always puts in the least effort possible but expects a great result. So guys, tell me what you think. Do you think that Usman can turn this round or do you think he's going to have to run off to America and get married to Lisa without mummy's approval? And whose fault do you think it is that mum gave a flat out no? Do you think Lisa could have tried harder or do you think the whole fault lay with Usman? Please let me know in comments down below and I will see you very soon with another video. Please don't forget to follow me on Twitter at mbird99 and also don't forget to press that red subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. You've been listening to eBird Online. Ciao for now.